Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for viewing my videos. Today I'm in beautiful northern London here in England. I'm in Hendon and I'm visiting the RAF Museum. Now imagine when you were a kid, you had a grandfather who participated in the Second World War as a member of the crew of the Boeing B-17, which you see right behind me. Now your grandfather was very proud of his accomplishments during the war and he was telling you a lot of stories and one story you remember very vividly he was telling you that he was a gunner he was manning one of the machine guns on the b-17 and at the end of 1944 they were flying a day mission about german cities and all of a sudden they saw a plane coming out of nowhere it shot a few cannon shots at the B-17, it missed, and then it disappeared just as quickly as fast as it had appeared on the horizon. And that's the first view your grandfather had of the Messerschmitt 262, the legendary first jet-powered fighter created by the Germans at the end of 1942 and the beginning of 1945. Now, you may not have seen one of those beautiful aircraft but there's one here in Hendon and what we're going to do for the next few minutes we're going to visit it it's an authentic it's a real one captured by the Allies and transfer over here to northern London let's go we're going to learn quite a bit about this fascinating aircraft come on you'll enjoy it and uh, here's our first view of the legendary and very historic Messerschmitt 262 the first jet fighter that saw action during a war in the world. Introduced at the later parts of 1944 and it saw a lot of action over the German skies until the end of the war in April of 1945. Now just about 1,400 of this wonderful aircraft were produced. And the one that you see here is an authentic Messerschmitt 262. And a lot of its features very well preserved and maintained here at the RAF Museum in Hendon in northern London. So let's walk around it and let's learn a few things about this fascinating and as I said legendary aircraft that had the potential to change the course of the war if it was introduced a little bit earlier than the end of 1944. By the end of 1944 the war was almost lost and regardless of the effectiveness of this jet fighter unfortunately for the Germans, for the Nazis and fortunately for the rest of the world the course of the history did not change. So let's look at the technical characteristics of this incredible machine. From a structural perspective, the ME262 is ten and a half meters in length from the tail to the, to the nose right there and the wingspan from one tip of one wing to the other tip is 12 and a half meters in length. Now this is an aircraft that required only one pilot and you can see the canopy over there. The pilot would step on the wing, flip over the canopy, get inside and then close the canopy cover right above him. And this aircraft that you see here is certainly larger than the single engine prop fighter the Messerschmitt BF 109 that we saw in another documentary and which was used 
extensively during the Second World War by the Germans. So this is slightly, slightly bigger in both length and wingspan. This is so well preserved, you can see the Luftwaffe insignia right here. And let's walk around and look at the tail section as well. They have done such a great job preserving this magnificent aircraft. And if you're lucky enough to come here to this museum or go to a museum where they display one of these aircraft, you'll always find people stopping and admiring it. Not too many of them, by the way, out of the 1,400 that were produced exist. So we're very lucky to find it here in Hendon, in northern London. And look at the aerodynamics. When the war was over, the Allied powers captured a lot of these planes and studied the aerodynamics and uh, a lot of the features applied here on this aircraft were applied in later technology for the jet-powered aircraft, both passenger and fighter aircraft. This uh, remarkable aircraft was uh, powered by two jet engines, the Junkers Jumo, J-U-M-O, 004 turbojet engines. And here's some incredible statistics about this aircraft. The speed it could develop was up to 540 miles per hour. To give you an idea how fast that is, today's commercial aircraft, when they fly at about 36,000 feet of altitude, their speed is almost the same, anywhere between 520 to 560 miles per hour. And this aircraft here could develop speeds similar to that of a, today's commercial aircraft. The ceiling of operations was about 35,000 feet. That's another remarkable statistic about this aircraft. Today's commercial aircraft, when they fly long distance, they go up to 36, maybe 38,000 feet of altitude. And that's absolutely incredible. The range, however, was very, very limited, and that was one of the factors that contributed to this aircraft not being a major factor in influencing the direction of the war. The range was only about 1,100 kilometers, or about 650 miles. Now, I could climb at a rate of 1,200 meters per minute. Here's a view of the engine much closer. You can see the turbofans inside the engine. And here's a view of this magnificent aircraft from the right side. And right next to it we find the dissected Junkers engine. Over 6,000 of these engines were produced by the Germans for the Messerschmitt 262. It is 4 meters in length, just about 12 feet. And it produced 1,540 pounds of thrust. Now here is something interesting that you don't see quite often. The engine had an electric starter and you can see it right there, right below the small engine, there's a little cylinder right there in the middle of the frame. That's the starter of the engine. Now, if the starter would not work, what they have done here is they have installed a twin cylinder, two stroke engine right there. That's a 10 horsepower, two stroke engine, two cylinders. You see the top cylinder here. You can see a cord right there. So if the starter will not work, 
at the nose of the aircraft there is a device here that you would pull and it would start just like the way you would start today a lawnmower right there and that would start the whole engine spinning and so on how interesting once again here's the nose and the tip of the engine with the little device the black device that sticks out right there and here's the close-up view of the engine that would be used to start the engine now this small engine that you see up front used regular petrol of course the rest of the engine would require special fuel and on top of the engine here somewhere over here was a small there used to be a small tank of three gallons for the starting two-stroke engine here's the end of the engine here right there now if the Messerschmitt 262 was built to function as a fighter aircraft it would be called in German Schwalbe which means swallow the small singing bird now if it was built to function as a bomber it would be called Sturmvogel which means storm bird now this aircraft was introduced as both a fighter aircraft and a bomber as well and depending on the model and the function of the aircraft the armaments on the aircraft would differ so you could find a an aircraft loaded with bombs under the wings and under the fuselage and rockets but what was standard were the four cannons that you see here the 30 millimeter cannons there's two on this side you can see the openings right there and if I walk around the nose right there you can see the two other ones or at least one of them and there was also another cannon a 15 millimeter cannon right here at the nose right now it's blocked with a little piece of uh, glass so you have five cannons up in the front at the tip of the nose and a lot of other armaments under the fuselage and under the wings as well when these aircraft were first introduced above the German cities at the end of 1944 and in aerial combat against Allied aircraft there was a lot of concern and worry from the side of the Allies what could they do in order, in order to limit the risk from this particular aircraft and the strategy in the very beginning at least was as follows first of all destroy as many of them as possible when they are on the ground secondly they were very vulnerable these aircraft you see when they take off and when they land and the allies try to destroy as many of them as possible when they take off or when they land the other thing that the allies noticed was that these aircraft required a very special type of fuel and then they changed their bombing strategies to destroy the fuel supplies for this particular aircraft and then once they figured what to do with this aircraft and how it was functioning they switched their tactics to fight against this aircraft in different ways here in England I heard a few years ago a second world war pilot and he was speaking about the dangers of the Messerschmitt 262 and this is what he said the ideal position to find yourself when it's time to fight such a machine was to be above them and behind them what the British pilots would do they would nose dive their aircraft vertically almost and by doing so they would increase the speed of the aircraft to almost the speed of the Messerschmitt 262 and this way they would get behind them and try to shoot them down that was one of the tactics anyway and I'm not really sure how successful this tactic was overall and here's another tactic let's say you're flying a Spitfire model MK 
and all of a sudden you find yourself in front of the Messerschmitt 262. Now because this aircraft here that is following you flies so fast, what you can do is take a very sharp turn to the right or to the left because the aircraft behind you is flying so fast, it cannot make a turn or a sharp turn like you did and sooner or later it will overshoot your position and now you can find yourself behind the Messerschmitt 262 and you can chase it and shoot it down if you can. That's another tactic that I've heard and this is used quite extensively in the tactics against the Messerschmitt 262. Wow, what an experience it has been to come here to the RAF Museum in beautiful London in England and to be able to videotape and to view one of the most legendary aircraft ever made, the Messerschmitt 262, the first jet-powered engine that participated in air combat built by the Germans in the late 1944 and beginning of 1945. This is Vic. Bye-bye.